Thank you. Welcome to another lecture. And today we'll be discussing something about Down syndrome. So uh, before I begin, I would like to request you to like, share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you haven't already downloaded our awesome app, then please go in the Play Store or the App Store in the link below and you can download any of our courses. You can join any of our courses. And if you haven't followed me on Instagram, please make sure you do. I post an image-based question every day. So it is very, very important that you follow me there. Uh, I have more than 16,000 followers and I would be very glad if you choose to follow me. So Down syndrome is very, very... Uh, common abnormality and it is the most common chromosomal abnormality. It is the most common chromosomal abnormality seen in uh, uh, all the patients or the most common overall. And the incidence is 1 is to 800 mean births. So every 800 delivery, uh, the mean incidence, the mean average incidence is this in across all the age groups or across all the deliveries. And it arises it uh, is around, uh, you know, 1500, 1 is to 1500, when a mother is of age 20 years, at the age of 20 years, and this rises to 1 is to 110, when the mother is of 40 years of age. So as you can see, there is a sharp decrease, a sharp increase in the incidence and a sharp decrease in the, uh, you know, uh, the prevented patients. So that is very, very bad. And the highest risk, the highest risk, highest risk is seen, highest risk or the highest incidence is seen when the child of Down syndrome has both parents of Down syndrome. So when both parents have Down syndrome, the highest risk, both parents are Down syndrome. So when two people of Down syndrome marry, every uh, one out of two delivery that the patient will undergo will be a uh, Down syndrome. So the prevalence increases uh, to one in every two deliveries when both patients are of Down syndrome or there is a history, history of maternal uncle, maternal uncle, mama ji, maternal uncle with Downs and the child is male. And the child is male Again, with these two combinations, again, the incidence is in one in every two deliveries. So this is the highest risk. Highest risk is seen in this both condition and that is why it is very important. Okay. So once this is out, what are the clinical features of Down syndrome? So modified Hall criteria is used. Modified Hall criteria is used. Okay, Hall criteria is used. Now, what the what are the features that you will see? So, first, the child has a brachycephaly. Brachycephaly. The child has a flat occiput, and the child has a wide open fontanelle. Wide open fontanelle, and temporal areas will have two extra fontanelles. So, wide open, and there are total six fontanelles in instead of four. Okay, so that is very, very important. Uh, the wide open fontanelles can be seen. Next face, you have a flat nasal, flat nasal bridge. You have flat nasal bridge and mouth will have a large protruding tongue. It will have a large protruding tongue. Okay. The child will have a mongoloid slant, mongoloid slant. And wide epicanthal fold. Wide epicanthal folds. Okay. And there will be brush field nodules or Irish nodules in the eyes. Brushed field nodules can be seen. And there are high risk of squint. And there is high risk of cataracts. Okay. So all these findings are seen in a patient with a Down syndrome. Next is neck. So short neck, short neck, the patient has a short neck and when you see the hands, you will have a simian crease. What is a simian crease? So imagine this is a normal hand. This is my normal hand. If you can see, you know, you can see. Uh, if you can see, then there are two uh, lines. So one line goes something like this. 
and the other line goes like this. Okay, there are two parallel lines. In a patient with Down syndrome, there will be a single horizontal line. And this is also seen with multiple other diseases. Like I had seen a patient with Prader Villi with a Samian grease. So Samian grease is not exclusive for Downs, but it is suggestive of a abnormality, especially chromosomal abnormality. Okay, so this is hands and there might be clinodactyly. We know that really there might be fusion of two joints, a fusion of two fingers. Okay. Feet will have a sandal crease. Feet will have a sandal crease. There is an extra gap. There is an extra gap between the toe and the first finger of the leg. And that is known as sandal crease. And this is the furrow that is present in the feet. Okay. There is hypotonia generalized, the hypotonia and hypermobility. And when you uh, check for CHD, you check for CHD, the most common CHD, see CHD is seen in uh, 40 to 50 percent of all patients with Down syndrome. The most common is endocardial cushion defect followed by VSD and ASD. Endocardial cushion defect is also known by the other name of AVSD, atrioventricular septal defect. So this is very, very important. Next abnormality that you see is thyroid dysfunction, thyroid dysfunction and it is usually uh, uh, you know it is it is a primary hypothyroidism the thyroid gland is involved so there is primary hypothyroidism there might be a hearing abnormality there might be decreased hearing hearing abnormality there might be presence of nystagmus there might be increased prevalence of duodenal atresia there is increased prevalence of Hirschsprung's disease there is increased prevalence of obstructive sleep apnea. There is increased prevalence of leukemias. There are increased prevalence of recurrent respiratory tract infection. So all this is seen in the patients of Down syndrome. How uh, will you investigate the investigation of choice as karyotyping, as you all know? Karyotyping is the investigation of choice for all monosomies, trisomies, and the chromosomal number abnormalities. All the chromosomal number abnormalities are diagnosed with karyotyping. While if there are uh, some big abnormalities in the gene or in the chromosome itself, you go for fish. If there are very, very small abnormalities, then you can go for chromosomal microarray or you can go for clinical or whole exome sequencing. So this is very, very important. Now, how do you do prenatal diagnosis? Prenatal diagnosis. So again, triple test, quadruple test, very, very important. So AFP, alpha fetoprotein, HCG and unconjugated estriol. Is is triol okay so this is low hcg is high hcg is high and alpha fetoprotein is low in the patient with down syndrome so this is what you see in a patient with down syndrome also there is increased nuchal fold or increased nuclear translucency which is seen in the first trimester it is seen in the first trimester, increased nuchal translucency so this is seen in the patient of down syndrome also other thing that you can see in Down syndrome is the free DNA, free uh, free cell DNA that you can diagnose in the maternal uh, blood. And this can be used for screening of Down syndrome. That is all for today, guys. I hope you like the video and you learned something new. And if you uh, uh, like such contents, please make sure you follow my channel. I see you in the next one.